the phone number. Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Uh, I, as you know, I had a complex. So I've been struggling to get in, but I will uh, be on video in about five minutes. Okay, you. great. Thank you. The uh, 375 number is mine. Well, it's two oh. It's excuse me. It's three oh five. Um, so I am going to call the meeting to order at this time. I just need to. Um, I'm getting word that I just want to make sure the live stream is ready to go so that folks um, who are live streaming can hear and see us. So one more second, please. Okay, we're good to go. So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 3.06 this afternoon. I know that there are a few folks who have to leave early due to scheduling conflicts. I also got word from Janice Contreras a few moments ago that she's had a family emergency, unfortunately, and is unable to join us. But I know she had conversations with our chairperson um, earlier, and I will make sure to reach out to her after and brief her on what has occurred during this meeting. So I'm gonna take roll call and if you could just indicate you're here, even though um, I can see some of you, but just so we have it. Um, Eddie Taylor. Here. Danielle Sindor. Sidnor, excuse me. Okay. She may be one of the folks joining us a little later. Sheila Wright. Here. Cordell Stokes. Here. Victor Ruiz. Here. Stephen Cavanis. Here. I see you. Are you on mute, Stephen? I've been having some technical difficulties. Uh, okay. Well, I see you're here. Okay. Hello. Okay. Marsha Mockaby. Here. Uh, Heidi Gallette. Heidi. Okay, Heidi's not with us right now. Hopefully she'll join soon. Randy McShepard. Here. Habiba Grimes. Habiba. Okay, hopefully she'll be joining us. India Pierce Lee. Here. Phyllis Harris. Here. Reverend Chalker, Kenneth Chalker. Here. Rabbi Joseph Caruso. Josh Caruso. Joshua. Here. I, why did I say Joseph? I apologize. No worries. I apologize. Joshua. Um, Denise, I spoke about. Levine Ross. Here. And Levine, I know that you have to leave the meeting a little early to get to another engagement. So thank you for taking the time to join us while you can. No problem. Thank you. And Yanella Sims. Here. Hi there. How are you? Okay, I want to also um, reintroduce uh, Cordell Stokes. Cordell is here with us today due to a mix up with regional collaboration as reflected in the minutes. He was unable to join the zoom call. So again, uh, Cordell, I apologize for that mix up on behalf of regional collaboration. And if you could just take a few moments on the last call. We had the members just introduce themselves, provide the name and organization, if any, that you represent, as well as why you believe this council's work surrounding the need for equity in our county, Cuyahoga County, is important. So if you'll do that for me, that would be great. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and absolutely no problem. I understand what took place last time, but uh, with all of the follow-up material, the minutes and what have you, um, I've been able to catch up. Again, my name is Cordell Stokes, Chairman and CEO of CLC Stokes Consulting Group. And just in response to your question, um, the five areas that the council has deemed be the five uh, priority areas of economic equity, health care, juvenile and adult justice systems, county policy, and procurement. The reason why I feel that this is necessary is that these are all platform issues across the nation that continue to be in a deficit of having been at an equitable level. And so under these circumstances, the advent of this council is very important to be able to really dive, take a deep dive and be able to address these particular items. Thank you. Thank you, Cordell. 
Very quickly, before we move on and get to the meat of the agenda, I just have a brief request. Some of you may have gotten communication from some members on my staff. What we're trying to do is sort of put together a, a list of contact information for the council members, your cell phone, your work phone, and your email address. So if you could provide that to um, someone on my team, we'll send another email. That would be great. Just so you all know, we're gathering this information. It's only going to be disseminated to other members of the council. So I would ask you all to keep folks' information confidential um, because we don't want that getting out. So it's just for our purposes only. For our moment of silence and reflection, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the tragic death of Elijah McLean. As most of you are probably aware, Elijah McLean was a 23-year-old African-American young man who was walking home from a convenience store in Aurora, Colorado. He had not committed a crime and he was not armed. He was confronted by police officers who claimed he was, quote, resisting arrest. The officers tackled Mr. McLean, they put him in a chokehold, and they called first responders who injected him with ketamine. He had a heart attack on the way to the hospital and died days later after being declared brain dead. In his heartbreaking last words, Elijah pled with the officers, telling him he could not breathe. He apologized for vomiting, and he told the officers he loved them. If we could just take a moment of silence to remember Mr. McLean. Thank you, okay. As you all received probably at about two o'clock, we did receive one public comment and that was distributed to you all prior to this meeting. We received, um, just in case you haven't had a chance to look at it, it was an email from Phyllis Benjamin. It was received um, Saturday, August 29th at approximately 11.23 a.m. And I will read the email to you from Mrs. Benjamin. It says, please keep me informed of the meetings of the new Citizens Advisory Council on Equity. I do have information about the first meeting in August. Kindly send me contact information so that I can stay informed as the committee members plan their strategies. I served in two school districts as the Equal Opportunity slash Equity Officer. Now retired, I am on the DEI Advocacy Committee for the LWV Greater Cleveland. I look forward to hearing from you, Phyllis Benjamin, and she leaves her phone number. I'd like to now turn to the County Executive, Armin Budish. Executive Budish, would you like to open the meeting with any comments? Sure, Anila, thank you. Um, and thank you all for uh, your uh, work as it's about to come. Um, when I met with each of you to talk about uh, joining the Citizens Advisory Committee uh, Council on Equity, uh, one thing we discussed was the commitment that would be necessary. Uh, I explained that this would be a working council, not just a showpiece or a rubber stamp. I explained that you all were selected because each of you have special skills, experience, and interests that would add significantly to the work of this uh, council. And I explained that each of you would be asked for a significant commitment of time and energy. You all agree, so I thank you. And uh, now that the work uh, has to begin, uh, we're ready to go. I know that Nayla Bird and Eddie Taylor have already been discussing a beginning agenda and how you all might proceed uh, most effectively. So uh, since there's a lot of work to do, and I do mean a lot, uh, I'll stop talking. I'll just again say thank you. Uh, I truly mean that. Uh, for your help on this very, very important task. Thanks. Thank you, Executive Budish. I now want to turn to some of our unfinished business from our meeting in August. As you may recall, we had a discussion about governance. And during that discussion, um, Eddie Taylor so graciously agreed to serve as chair, and we are thankful for that. Um, and again, Eddie, I, I thank you on behalf of the county. We also, though, talked very briefly about selecting a co-chair, and I know that Chair, Chair Taylor requested a co-chair during the August meeting, but we never really got around to um, someone volunteering. So I just wanted to revisit that and see if there is 
any of the remaining uh, 16 of you who at this point will volunteer to co-chair um, this very important work with Eddie Taylor. I know you all wanna speak up at once, but if there's anyone who'd be willing to do it, we'd be really uh, thankful. And as I've, I've mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna all share in this work. We're amongst equals in this process. So this title, uh, while more than ceremonial, I understand that certainly is not a reflection in terms of a hierarchy. So I would say if there are no co-chairs, at least at some point, and we have to deal with what the bylaws allow, certainly hopefully someone is willing to uh, do a vice chairmanship if, if that seems more reasonable to your thinking. Now, either one is appropriate, but I do believe, uh, and whether we resolve that here today, I do believe that has um, some importance in terms of how we, how we proceed with this work. Not shirking, not avoiding, it's just a matter of finding a way to have as many voices in this process as possible. So I will stop there with my thoughts on the subject. Thank you, Eddie. So again, I would ask, is there anyone um, willing to step up and be a vice chair or a co-chair as Eddie pointed out? Hey, well, this is Ken Chogger. I'm willing to step up, but I think that the optics are not good on an equity commission for an old white guy to be in some kind of a, and I'm not demeaning myself. I just don't think the optics are helpful, but I simply want you to know I'm willing to do what I can to be helpful with the process and certainly don't want to have anyone think I'm shirking uh, willingness to, to be involved. Thank you, uh, Reverend Chalker. I appreciate that. What what are do other folks on the committee have a thought about? And I think that's an important issue, uh, Reverend Chalker, about the optics. Do others of you have a thought about that, or is there anyone else willing to step up who's not? Um, and I'm not going to call you old, Reverend, but who's not a white male. I'll leave it at that. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts about what the Reverend has said or concerns? Now, you look, <clears throat> this is Cordell. Um, I don't have a problem with what Reverend Chalker stated, but what I was sitting here thinking about would be because of the dynamics demographically, if we can get number one at minimum, maybe Hispanic representation and a female represent representative. I don't have a problem with stepping up or chairing, but it's similar to what Pastor Chalker said, but I would look at the two dominating um, black and Hispanic populations in the city if we have the breath to be able to bring on a female and or Hispanic. It's Nyla. That narrows it for us. <laughs> yes, Sheila? Hi, just a quick question. I'm just trying to clarify. Uh, this is a question around a particular committee, the governance committee, correct? No, this is a question, and I apologize if I wasn't clear. This is a question around just serving in a dual role with Eddie in terms of being either a chair or a, a co-chair with Eddie or a vice chair um, with Eddie for the entire council for all of the work we do. But I think as Eddie has pointed out, we are still gonna have other subcommittees and chair responsibilities likely if that's what you all decide. So this is really for, again, just the overreaching council in general. Well, well let me do this. There, there is certainly some fluidity to this process. We all get that. We know that, and you'll, we'll talk about the details in just a moment, what's due and when it's due. We also know that there's sunset to this committee, but um, I'm of the belief that terms are appropriate. Uh, so because we have terms, because we want to think about succession, I know it seems kind of early to think about that at this point, but it, it's never too early because it's time will we'll, uh, be biased before we know it. I would say if, and thank you, Reverend Chalker, I would say to um, the point made by Mr. Stokes that, that the optics are appropriate. Let's do this because we may not be able to resolve it today. Um, and then I realize the awkwardness of having to sort of a step up and appoint yourself a volunteer. Uh, we will take uh, this under, I'll call it a bit of advisement counselor and, uh, and get back to folks, maybe have some one-off conversations um, to see if we can resolve this in a way that doesn't have the same level of, of uh, again, awkwardness to the process. Yeah. 
I like that idea um, because what comes up for me is um, not knowing uh, you know, we know the scope of work is going to be big and 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 um, wanting to be able to do it justice in a, in a co-chair um, role without having enough information about how much that's going to take is part of the question that I have so maybe um, having individual conversations with good candidates um, would help. So a little bit slowing down the speed up. Are those head nods in agreement? Are folks okay with that as a interim process? Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's right. fine. It also gives you an opportunity to speak to people who aren't here for this right. particular call. Great. Okay, so what I will do is I will table that um, discussion, but I will also table it with the background piece, if you're okay with this, uh, Chairman Eddie, that um, Reverend Chalker has expressed a willingness if the, if the council sees fit for him to step up, as if I heard correctly, as has Cordell. Is that fair? Um, I, to me. I, think, I think it's fair as long as you indicate that I, I brought up as well, the issue of optics. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes, okay. absolutely. Right. You, you brought it up even first. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Okay, well, that leads actually nicely into the next item on the agenda, which is the bylaws discussion. And on our Zoom call, we do have Assistant Law Director Awada Basad uh, with us today. And she, um, as you know, is serving as counsel for uh, our group or this group. And she has drafted, um, has submitted a draft of the bylaws. They are not yet finalized. Um, we hope to have them finalized later this week and distribute them probably to you all via email. And then during our next meeting in September, we can vote on them and move forward. So that's the plan. Are there any questions about that at this time for many of the members? Okay, so hearing no. none, I am going to um, move on and talk about again uh, what Chairman Eddy has sort of brought up a little bit is sort of subcommittee assignments. Um, as of right now, we do have uh, the communications and outreach subcommittee and we'll hear from them and give you a briefing on that a little later in the agenda. But we should also now turn to what other subcommittees the council wants to create. And I submitted um, to you all in advance a PowerPoint, um, just a couple of slides, and I'm going to probably ask Laura or hopefully figure out and have more luck than during another call how to share a couple of those slides with you now. Laura, what should I do? Can you all see the screen? Yes, yep. okay, I'm seeing head nods, great. So if I just turn to the second slide, um, as you may recall, this council's work is governed by resolution, um, the resolution declaring racism a public health crisis in Cuyahoga County. And on the screen, we have the councils reviewed with focusing on and providing recommendations to reduce, reduce, excuse me, disparity between black and white people with regards to what's in the green on the slide, healthcare, criminal justice system, access to healthy foods, safe and affordable housing, well-paying jobs and economic business ownership opportunity, quality transportation, educational opportunities, as well as safe places to be active. We also, as this council, and we've gone through both, you all have gone through during your confirmation hearings in front of county council, as well as on our last meeting, had certain areas that you'd like to focus on, which include economic, equi economic equity, healthcare, juvenile adult justice systems, county policies, as well as procure procurement, excuse me. What I'm gonna ask of you now is if you would like to decide what subcommittees do we think are needed either from this list or anything else that you all think is of value and how would you like to go about sort of determining these subcommittees? What I would say if folks can think about it, we all have a 
frame of reference, those things that are important to us. And we heard that um, in every bit of our, I'll call it testimony to be a part of, of this committee. But if we are to be honest with ourselves, and we're gonna hear from Peter in a little bit, who thanks to Heidi has been brought to our attention and is going to help us through this process to create this map, the systems map we've talked about. But the honesty that I'm speaking of is, is to think about core issues. And I know hard to derive at this point, but an issue or two in terms of these areas of focus that we believe really go to the heart or the core or our drivers in this process, while they all are, uh, what folks sort of rises to your list, to the top of your list uh, as, uh, as an area or two of focus? And again, this is an open conversation uh, and I think we should, we should try to deliver upon at least some sense of what that uh, might look like to this group. Eddie, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to jump in with just a couple of initial thoughts. Uh, first of all, I do wanna offer this, that <clears throat> county policy is a bit nebulous uh, or vague. And I, I do believe in any of the categories that we're looking at, we will be talking about county policy as it might relate to economic equity, healthcare, procurement. I mean, that that's sort of the foundation of um, the work that I think we will be doing, you know, understanding what the county's policies and practices are in addressing those various areas. So I don't know if that might mean that we strike that particular bullet uh, with that understanding or not, certainly open to what the group thinks. But I clearly would argue that we can't move forward without juvenile adult justice systems and economic equity as two critical areas that get to the heart of uh, what the county's business and responsibilities are juxtaposed uh, against what the real challenges of the day are for Northeast Ohio and uh, communities of color. So that's uh, one man's opinion, but uh, hopefully that gets us started. Mr. Chair. Yeah, one, uh, one man who um, <laughs> we all know has learned an <laughs> awful about these things. So thank you. Uh, so, uh, this is Sheila. Uh, <clears throat> Randy, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I believe that economic equity is a thread as I look through these categories or these sub um, committee categories. It seems to me that economic equity is a thread that runs through each one of them. And so I just, um, you know, I'm interested in the specific work with respect to that particular area, but I think that economic equity is something that touches every one of these particular categories or serves, you know, as the, the basis um, for the, the manifest inequities that we see every day. So I certainly so, think that's one that we move along with. I just like to drill down at some point with a little more clarity around economic equity. I'm not sure if it was related to employment um, when it was added to the list, um, businesses, but from where I sit in the work that I do, um, it's truly, it becomes the economics of it that, um, you know, leaves people behind, whether it's, you know, I mean, preaching to the choir, access to resources or education or whatever it is. So certainly um, would like to see that particular category teed up, just would like more uh, clarity around the specifics or the intention of it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, this is Cordell. Um, just what Sheila said, I thought that was appropriate, but Randy as well. One of the things I definitely think we definitely have to zero in on is the hiring practices, because how do you go about the recruitment, uh, retention, et cetera. But as with large governmental entities, sometimes ex offender issues become a question, how do they have access, as well as um, just hiring overall, um, not just based on you know, the overall quali qualifications, but how do you increase diversity and inclusion? in the um, hiring practices. Okay, Ed, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would offer that um, like some of my other colleagues have talked about, 
is the connection of economic equity. Um, I see it a little differently. Uh, I see it as more of an umbrella. Um, I think that when we look at what we're tackling around racism as a public health crisis, and we're talking about dismantling practices and policies uh, in various segments uh, of, of our, uh, in our city, in our county, I think that the culture of how organizations view, how they mission around, and how they create their policy and practice around the idea of economic equality then begins to drive how it plays out in these other issues. So I would say for me, I think economic equity is almost a mission or vision North Star that we have to be focused on. And then looking at the pillars uh, underneath that that are uh, you know connected to that. Very good. I, I think that's helpful for me because I keep feeling like I have to rank them and I see them as connected. So when I heard umbrella, you know, I was seeing um, racism as a public health crisis here, all of these issues, and then sort of what can happen and what steps will happen to address them like in parallel tracks, which might be nuts, but I I just don't understand how we're gonna rank one over the next and not fail. <laughs> well, the, the interconnectivity is certainly 100% right on and none of us are denying that they're levers, right? And one lever affects another. Uh, I was just kind of trying to get a perspective because we're going to have to dive deeper into this and then folks will take on responsibilities within that dive that they want to have. Uh, but there's ultimately what we're asking for is writing, right? We're going to have to, to write and deliver and respond to. Um, so some of it is about interest, uh, but also if there is a core issue, an umbrella issue or a key lever, whatever it might be, I just wanted to, to sort of get to that. But we're reminded, thank you, Counselor, that uh, the internal policies um, are, as, as indicated, spelled out in the enabling legislation. So we aren't foregoing that as a part of our charge. We recognize we, this is a county effort. The county's policies have to be, if pulled apart is appropriate or dissected, whatever it might be, in order to arrive at an equitable position or a position which supports health care or uh, juvenile and adult issues with respect to incarceration it starts there. So we're not going to forget that. Uh, so Marcia, to your point, there, that might be the umbrella along with equity that we are exploring. Again, we'll hear uh, a better way of mapping this uh, eventually from Peter. So right on, uh, I think we probably should move on. So I'm hearing economic equity. I'm hearing the juvenile, the justice system. I'm hearing um, as well that uh, hiring practices related to uh, equity in so many ways. Uh, any other thoughts, to not ranking them, but just what comes to mind is, and I guess in some ways it is ranking, but what comes to mind is a sort of a must do. Eddie, there's a few, there's a uh, two or three uh, references to healthcare in the chat section. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Healthcare. Okay. Hi, this is Habiba Grimes. Um, it didn't come up in our, our initial discussion about those priorities, but education, it feels um, strange to leave that out. And I'm um, appreciating the idea of economic equity as a, as a hub or umbrella issue. Um, what the visual that or metaphor that comes to mind for me is racism as a wheel crushing folks, economic equity as the hub of the wheel and the spokes that come off of that and are held in place by the economic inequities. So education is one of those school funding in Ohio, in our region, drives the inequities in an ongoing way. Um, and so if we can perhaps braid that in, the schools also are a driver for the justice system and incarceration. 
So if I can, and, and perhaps I, I perhaps the slides aren't as clear as they should be, and I think to all of your comments, the slide that I'm now sharing with you has what the resolution has as the areas that this council is charged with focusing on. The other slide was just sort of a summation of what folks brought up during their confirmation. But I think to what most of you have said, if we look at these as sort of the broad ranges, and as we talk about sort of the economic equity and hiring practice, that covering some of these, that may be helpful as well. And I think to your point, Habiba, educational opportunities is one of the areas that is a focus um, of the, the resolution and a charge for us. Are there any other sort of comments or thoughts? Yeah, so I guess my, I guess what I would add, Mr. Chairman, is that, you know, the top three that I see is as themes that we could really use as, uh, you know, just high levels, the ac economic equity, healthcare and justice system. And then, you know, when it comes to accountability, you know, who's going to be responsible, which committee is going to be responsible for what, I think then we could sort of um, figure out which committee will oversee, you know, maybe education or some other elements under healthcare, some other elements uh, under economic equity. So thank you, thank you for that. And thank you, Nyla, for reminding us that all of these are focus areas as a part of the resolution. But uh, here's in my view, and I, I, I welcome the pushback here. Um, we will want to treat all these as equal parts, but there has to be a theme and that theme has to drive and comment upon and refer to and affect all the other focus areas. But I do believe we have to have a theme as this report begins and ends in terms of what are the key influencers, if you will, that can make a difference for the county in this work. My view, uh, again, I, I welcome the pushback because I know there perhaps are other thoughts. So yes, thanks for the reminder. But I also wanted us to train our thinking as well on what might be um, the direction we, we wish to pursue. I expected to be slammed on that one. No one. No one Eddie, is. Um, I know you mentioned this already, but I, I just almost feel like I'd like to see get information from the mapping exercise to see to add a little more clarity to this. Uh, we, we may get things out of that mapping that we never thought of. Um, and it could also confirm a lot of these as well. Fair enough. Okay, we should, we should move on. Uh, thank you for that, Victor. That, that's an important um, reminder to take a step back. Okay, um, so I will move on. Um, so in terms of additional voices, um, members of the community, representatives of community organizations have voiced interest in assisting this council with its charge. I have specifically received outreach from Will Tarter from the Center for Community Solutions. He's requested to provide testimony to the committee. Uh, Phyllis Benjamin, who submitted the public comment, she also reached out to me via email, offering her assistance. And as we know from our last meeting, uh, Peggy Zone from the Diversity Center has reached out. And so my now charge to the council is, how would you, are there thoughts around how and if you would like to engage these folks? How would you like to utilize them or as a resource? And what do you see as the next steps for, whether it's Peggy Zone, William Tarter, uh, Phyllis Benjamin, or any of these folks that have reached out, if any. So I'll turn it over to you all for discussion about that. Now, this is India. I think if we get more clarity, um, as Victor just suggested, the mapping, then it will be um, easier if we get profiles on those wanting to help to figure out what area that they can assist us in. And as the communications chair, you know, I'm thinking that, um, you know, there's always going to be some way to, um, uh, you know, support getting information out and communicating to the, uh, the folks that they are um, networked with about the work that we're doing and maybe even bringing feedback. OK. 
Okay. So as an overall question, then do we have, we can map it and we can know what we want to hear, or have some idea of what we should hear. Are we okay with hearing testimony from, and I hope the answer is yes, from those who can help in this process. You know, this is sort of binary at this point, and then we can figure out the who and what might be said. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's really important. I, sorry, go ahead. I just said, I think we're just saying at the appropriate time. Okay. And I would love to see us pr present, proactively present opportunities for that to occur. There you go, important. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, well, actually the conversations that we've had from Victor and others about the mapping leads nicely into the next topic. Um, I believe Dr. Hobman is on the Zoom call with us today. Um, I'd just like to take another moment to introduce him to our group. As you may recall, during our um, meeting earlier this month, uh, Heidi discussed Mr. Dr. Hobman's work um, and he is a, I believe he's a PhD as well as an MSW, and his work is focused on social system designs. He has graciously agreed to volunteer his expertise um, on behalf of this council's work. Um, Dr. Hoffman, are you out there in Zoom? Yes, land? I'm here. Thank you very much. I, thank you. Would you like to sort of reintroduce yourself and share a little bit more about your background with the larger group at this time? Sure. Um, again, my name is uh, Peter Hoffman. I just joined the faculty um, at Case Western, um, but have been working on issues of, around structural violence, uh, gender-based violence and structural racism for many years um, in St. Louis and internationally. And um, it just really, and that includes work, uh, working with groups in different sizes and scales on, on mapping systems, um, helping communities think about how their systems are connected and then picking up on um, the point earlier that sometimes the organization of work and how they're tied to outcomes ends up being um, sometimes reshaped through through that type of insight by being able to see the system as a whole. And um, I know from the last meeting there was also mention about getting youth in, engaged so if, if there's a video I have from work in St. Louis that's about two and a half minutes if people want to sort of see that. That might be a, a quick way to get a sense of what it looks like from community side or could look like. So, so Heidi, I'll ask you to, to tag team this with, uh, with Dr. Um, Dr. Alvin, if you don't mind, just because we in our committee, and you are um, helping lead this process, um, helped us get here, of course. So I'm interested in your thoughts uh, as you continue to frame not only what you originally presented to us, but the thinking now that we've had some preliminary discussions with Dr. Hoffman. Thank you so much, Eddie. So my, my thought um, in bringing this to the group was that um, over the past um, 10 years that I've been doing this work here in um, Greater Cleveland, but particularly over the last five, when we've been working um, on the community health improvement plan, the issue of structural racism and uh, particularly issues around economic equity as an overarching theme have been increasingly uh, more apparent. And it has become really apparent to me that systems thinking is a critical tool for understanding how all these pieces fit together. And that was originally the impetus for um, the team that I work with to reach out to Peter to begin with. Um, and that was really through the, the work of the Community Health Improvement Plan, which is not focused on healthcare, but rather focused on thinking much more upstream about the conditions that we need to transform in order for equity to be achieved, in order for everyone in this community to reach their full potential. And that's not gonna, we're not gonna get there through healthcare. Certainly we have a lot of room to improve there, but from my perspective as a clinician and as a public health provider, we really had to look in a different place. And so that's really what drew me to Peter's work. And also once I've been listening to all of our testimony before we uh, even were confirmed on this committee and then also our first few meetings, it just seemed to me that, that working with Peter and mapping a really complex system, but also 
a place where there's hope and where we have a very timely opportunity to provide interventions that could really make transformative change um, now, but also in, in the future. So a lot of different time points. And so it felt to me like creating a systems map, using systems thinking and the work we're trying to do would really be an opportunity for us to have the big picture, um, but not do this as an academic exercise or something that slows us down, but rather use this as a tool to increase our efficiency in determining when and where we need to provide interventions and recommendations. So that's the context in which I um, am so grateful that you all took uh, took me up on maybe uh, meeting up with Peter and then uh, a small group of us met with him and, and that led us to today. Happy to provide any more uh, context if, if needed, Eddie. Well, here, here's what I would ask of Victor and India and others who have suggested rightly that you know this map, this thinking is important to inform our, our, our work. Are there questions, you know, we recognize this is streamed and recorded, but are there questions without pre-assuming any end product of, of uh, Peter as we go through this effort. In other words, what might want you what you might want to see, what input will you offer? Any any thoughts from uh, you two in particular since you brought up, but certainly the broader group of questions of Peter. I, I'd love to see an example of um, other work, you know, could be in healthcare or just just to start getting a sense of what this could look like. And no specific question, Eddie. I think Phyllis has a question in the chat. Um, would we be willing to share information more broadly about system, what systems thinking is and how will it be supportive? I would love to um, bounce that question to Peter uh, to answer. Um, and, and the rest of the question is so we can learn and the community can be informed. Yeah, so so briefly, I can I can pull together a, a, a list of examples of, of prior work just so you can see what are the different options. And I, this is partly why I also mentioned the video because I think hearing it from young people's voices and how they, uh, what they saw in the method and how they worked through the workshop was is especially powerful. Um, I think in terms of, of um, for a lot of the work that's been community engaged and community here, I mean, it can mean schools, neighborhoods, but it's all, it's increasingly also become commissions and, and boards and so forth. So it doesn't, um, it, it's been a blend of both. Um, a key part of the approach that at least that I've been working with uh, folks on is uh, ways that people are developing the systems language together around a particular issue shaping the conventions, the diagrams, and also gaining opportunities to both learn that and also practice explaining um, the work and communicating to other audiences. Because ultimately, whatever comes out of a workshop or a session or a mapping exercise has to go beyond the immediate participants. Um, and if it's, if it's really about, if there are insights that are coming from the system and they're, they're really about change, they're often pretty counterintuitive, at least to some people. Um, and so it's, it's um, you, you need people who can explain it and, and do so effectively. Um, so part of it is learning the conventions and, and um, not, not just sort of taking information in and producing a diagram, but, but actually making sure that people are understanding and making decisions about what's working, where and how. So I tend to be more, there are a lot of times I'll throw a question back, how do you want it represented or what, here are some choices. And, Again, I'm happy to talk about that some more, but it's building capacity in, in a community to be able to talk about systems and the systems thinking. Uh, Peter, just a follow-up question to that. Um, are, are we talking about talking with county leaders about their views of how well the systems are working or external uh, input into that or both? So let me, I guess, hold, um, I think initially the, the thought is to, um, you're going to have a set of conversations and just from the conversations you're having as part of this uh, council, I can actually begin drawing some structure and mapping the system and then reflect that back. That's not, that's not a final product, um, but that's a way that you can see the correspondence between what you're saying and how you're framing the issues and, and um, a system map. 
that might lead into questions about this is incomplete. We need to talk with other people. Other voices need to be represented. This is too complicated. It needs to be in this format. And that would I would defer that to sort of a discussion at that second stage. But it can be, it, it can be pretty broad. I mean, if, if we've done this at a statewide level, national level with leaders, organizations, community members, schools, neighborhood organizations. So that, that's possible. But the decision depends on what direction you want to want to go with that type of work. The first step, I think, is really just to try to capture, to give you an example of what what the idea would be to would be to build on what's already been shared in testimony and meetings, um, and and use that as a input for for an initial diagram. And I would just add that Peter is also working with the Health Improvement Partnership Cuyahoga team at the same time. So we have four se uh, sessions, several hour sessions with that group, which is a cross sector group. That then if the first one is in two weeks, um, there are four before the end of October, I think. So all of that is also focused on eliminating structural racism and looking at a systems map around racism. So that's also um, happening. And, uh, and there's a, there's a fair, there are a fair number of um, different sectors and community members represented in those sessions. So it's not just what we're saying, but I think what Peter has said um, here and before is that you know we can determine who else we need to include in the discussion um, as this unfolds. Are there any oh. other questions or comments or anything from or to Peter from anyone? Yeah, so I, I just, just a clarifying question. So what, what I think I understand is cur currently you can and probably do a, I would say a preliminary map based on what is, what's been shared with you, like testimony, et cetera. And then, you know, hypothetically, you know, we select, you know, our th three themes and then, you know, the subcommittees meet, you know, are you gonna be sort of engaging in those conversations and digging into the policies and potential implications of changes sort of real time and then uh, make changes to that initial sort of baseline observation of the system map? I, I think it, it depends a little bit. Uh, so based on prior work on, on commissions, um, you, you can, I can listen to testimony and conversations and I can map it and I can present that back to a group. Um, and then that, that helps people sort of get get a view of the system and get familiar with the conventions, but then how groups decide to proceed with that beyond that. Some may wanna go into more detail and have things mapped in real time. Other groups, um, sometimes groups have break into committee structures and each committee, there's a better way of representing it. So there, there, there are choices that are available about how to proceed. Um, it, it's pretty flexible. I don't have a specific, um, structure like step one, step two, step three. I know people keep asking me for that, but it, it's much more, it ends up being much more organic based on, you know, and, and people have lots of tools for thinking about systems. So sometimes you see uh, groups already have a way of thinking about the system and that's a set of visual conventions and that's important to respect. But Peter, you're, you've committed to being with us on this process. So this isn't, that's correct. This isn't that's like correct. you're gonna just listen to a few conversations, show a map back, see if we like it and then take off, you're gonna, you're gonna help guide us here. When, yeah. <laughs> when we might wanna yeah. consider using it in a particular way or where we may, you may consider suggesting that we open up to some, some key informant interviews that would help inform a piece Correct. of the map that's not adequate. And, and you know, this is, this is very much a, a, an organic systems process, but not something that we're gonna just spend a bunch of time in the detail and not actually get to moving toward the work. Like this is right. a tool to help us move our work forward. Correct. I would love Thank to you. see the video if um, if that's still if that's possibility. Just to give us a sense of your work, Peter. Yes, I would too. I can uh, I can share the link. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm 
I apologize for, I think I kicked myself off, uh, but I'm sure the conversation was more productive without me on the line. So hopefully we all got to where we needed to. And I, I as I was yeah, booting myself, I heard Heidi say as well, this isn't an ac academic exercise and your, your questions to Peter uh, hopefully have, have made that clear as well. While there is a bit of that incorporated, certainly, I think what I just heard is there's work to do. Uh, so is everyone satisfied or are there more questions for Peter at this point? Where do we begin, Peter? Great question. Um, so I think in, in there's different options about how you can think about having conversations. Um, there's the testimony you originally have. I imagine there's conversations from the previous meeting, which actually are already starting to flesh out some things. So I think if you have some testimony or presentations over the next meeting or uh, next couple of meetings, those are things that whatever is presented in terms of trying to understand the issue as, as a council broadly, um, that's enough for me at least to begin to, to take that and then reflect back in a, at the next meeting. And that doesn't have to be, that could be, doesn't have to be actually taking up council time, it could be a diagram or a subset of people who look at it and then reflect back on what might be useful. I'm, I'm just gonna be candid. Uh, does that answer satisfy you, Randy? Well, I guess in, in my mind, um, not to oversimplify it, but I just keep thinking about the right place to start might be hearing from county leadership to get their perspective on, as an example, um, mm -hmm. I happen to know Ted Carter, who's the chief of economic development for Cuyahoga County. What does he think is working in county government right now? What kind of investments has he made? Uh, you know, what keeps him up at night? What are the three or four things that he would do if he had more resources? I think those kinds of uh, questions from a senior official that walks the, the walk every day, I think can be very illuminating for us because uh, on one hand, we can understand the broader community challenges associated with economic equity or healthcare or whatever. Uh, Dr. Gulak could do the same thing with healthcare. I mean, because they're so close to it and they have the benefit of knowing sort of how the county operates today and what they might consider to be strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, what have you. I think those are the types of testimonials that I'd like to hear because I think that really gets us off the ground, both with an understanding of what's happening internally with the county as well as what they're seeing in the external environment, who they're partnering with, you know, what, what they see as gaps, et cetera. I just think that would be very helpful to get this full group up to speed. Now, um, again, that's my opinion. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I concur with what Randy just said, because it does give a baseline of getting information in particular about the juvenile and the adult justice system, along with economic, um, economic development and other departments. Because if we hear forthcoming information from them, then all the thoughts and, and, and goals and ambitions that we had I think we could better mesh and develop a better product um, because then we'll also learn where some of the gaps are and where some of the pluses are. And that will also create efficiency where we won't have to necessarily tackle something that's already working as opposed to doing it blindly where we think something may not be working, but it really is. So I concur with what Randy said about personal testimony from county leadership in certain areas. I personally like the idea of um, the personal testimonies, but I do have one caution um, uh, that I'm thinking about even for, my, for myself and that I'd like to raise. If we get people talking about what they're doing now, what they're doing now is entrenched in where we are now. Somehow we got to move the needle on where is it that we're trying to go? And the conversation has to be is what is the gap between where we're trying to go and where the organizations are now? So for me, that's, that's a real big issue 
I don't want to see us spend a lot of time, you know, talking about, I mean, we kind of know what the, you know, what, what's happening now. And we got to get organizations ourselves to hold mirrors up to our organizations and to be, to be bold and to be brave about identifying what existing practices and policies are actually contributing to institutional and structural racism and how do we attack those? So, so Marsha, I, I, I agree with you and I think you're right. If we, we can't do that mirror exercise, then we will not have been successful in this process. I would, I would only add though, I bet if we talk to this, the folks in the county senior leadership are working hard. We don't doubt that one bit. And many of them have successes to point to. We don't doubt that either. Uh, so I doubt that we are starting from zero, but the gaps you mentioned are real and we have to deal with those gaps. So to this whole sort of baseline conversation, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to giving them an opportunity to tell us where things currently are, then we have to be honest with them in return. But I also believe that uh, real efforts have been made, but I'd be surprised if any of those folks said they are where they wanna be. And maybe that is illuminating as well. So I'm with you. I, I don't think we, we can simply sort of settle for what's been done. Nobody's suggesting that, but it might be helpful in these discussions. Again, um, my view, others may feel differently. You know, one thing, uh, Mr. Chairman, with Marsha, I think that was Marsha that was making mention of that from a time and efficiency standpoint, but to stay in accord with what I believe Randy brought up would be a value. Maybe we don't do it as a full committee, but maybe make a small ad hoc committee responsible for maybe interviewing. We're not talking about all leadership. We're only talking about a couple of people maybe to interview that would have, because um, when you're looking at juvenile justice and adult criminal system, you're looking at procurement, you're looking at or economic equity, which covers a whole slew of departments. Um, I don't think you have to spend a lot of time with a, a, a variety of staff members or leadership, but I think it does bring value of the ad hoc committee or whatever you may want, subcommittee or whatever it may be, Mr. Chairman, but it will give you some additional texture to what we're doing as a collective, in my opinion. Of course, I go with the majority decision. Well, thank you, but, but Marsha, I want you to be satisfied that there might be some utility in hearing in a limited way from, from folks who are on the ground, perhaps doing this work already within the county. And, 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 I concur, I concur. Okay, okay. And, and Marsha, we should be asking those difficult questions that you just posed, you know, what, what do they think is uh, standing in the way and, and um, feeding the flame, so to speak, as relates to uh, racial inequity as they see it as, as uh, you know, officials working in the system, I mean, their responses will be very telling for this this group, to be quite honest. That's where I was trying to go, Andy. Okay, so back to your question. That's where I was trying to go. Thank you. Where to start with Peter? Peter, um, you you mentioned uh, these the testimony, the interviews, the conversations. We may start at home, if, as it were, right, with some of these discussions before we move outside. We will try to make this as efficient as possible, so that we're not tying up. A lot of folks time but this may be the effort that we start around subcommittees and such so thank you randy for that suggestion i think it's a good suggestion anyone have any additional thoughts on sort of where to start with peter's work or the work that peter has uh, suggested to begin with okay peter now are you satisfied with what you've heard from this group Sort of a yeah, I think I think this is great. I think um, and then having some testimony or interviews, I think it's a great place to start. And that's worked really well before. Okay. All right. Uh, if Thank I you. may, Eddie, this is Neela. I just asked: Is it the uh, council's view at this point that they'd like to have a smaller 
ad hoc or subcommittee engage some of county leadership? And if so, you know, I obviously can liaison and get those people available. If you would just let me know who you all want to hear from. Do you want to do it at our next meeting? I, I'm just not clear as to how you'd like me to proceed and how I can be most helpful for you all. So if you guys don't mind, this will be chair privileged. And I, I would like to uh, ask Mr. McShepard and Ms. Maccabee to uh, work or co-chair in this effort to get the folks together who we think we might want to hear from. And if there are those who want to sign up to hear the conversations they will lead, um, that would be great as well. Um, uh, so they will, in, unless they're shaking their heads no, and I don't see no's yet. Randy, you haven't moved. I, I just want to ask the group, um, <laughs> are there any of you that feel like you really want to be a part of those discussions? I wouldn't want to force a select group to, to be a part of those listening sessions if the full group believes that they want to hear that as a good you know, foundation to start the work. I would like to be part of those discussions. I would too, India. So, so right get a notice issue, right? You guys are coordinating, you're working with the administration, you're not, then we send out notice to everyone. And if everyone decides to be in on the sessions, great, sure. depending upon your schedule. So I, I'd like to make it more of a notice session rather than, than um, you know, sign up and say yes, because all of us should want to hear parts of this, I imagine. Someone just has to lead it. Exactly. Okay. Is so that reasonable you, for the folks? Phyllis, is that reasonable? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Randy and our Marsha. Randy, I know you mentioned Ted Carter. As you sit here now, are there others? Um, and even if you don't know the individuals, other department heads that I can identify as well? Um, or, or Marsha that you'd like to hear from. I, I have Ted Carter listed, any others? Randy, do, we've heard a lot come up about juvenile justice and adult justice. Do we wanna hear from that, um, the leader, leaders? For, for me, I think it would just be, this is Steve, uh, for, important to uh, to know who sort of is the best person under each of the areas maybe that we feel are, are themes that we want to dig into. Okay, so I, I think, see, that goes with what Marcia was saying in terms of adult and juvenile justice. And I can share right. with you the way Armin's structure in, in, his, um, in his administration is that there's a chief of what's called um, public safety. And his name is uh, Robert Corey. And there's also um, a sheriff who's Dave Schilling. And there is a jail administrator, um, Rhonda Gibson. I think those would be obviously on the justice side that's in Arnon's control. Obviously you also have a, a, a prosecutor, you have a juvenile administrative judge. We have an administrative judge of common police court. Just don't know where you guys want to go with that for now. I would imagine who, who does the day-to-day, -day, the um, the first three that you named before, you have the sheriff, Robert Corey, and it was a third person I named, prior to getting into the prosecutors. Huh? I named the jail administrator. She also reports up to Armin. Her name is Rhonda Gibson. She is, um, I, I believe her title is jail administrator. So she's in charge of the jail. Well, just Armin, my recommendation, I, I, I think at least those three. And just my recommendation, because there's a lot of issues transpiring in each of those areas. So, um, Randy, if, I'm sorry. Randy if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, Randy, per perhaps should you and you and I kind of look at the, the, the pillar, the same, whatever we're calling them areas and then match those up to um, the leadership at the county level and then kind of figure out, you know, from that who we should, you know, talk to and maybe prioritize it. Um, yes, I think know, that's, a good, that's a good use of time. Um, 
and that's that that will be quite efficient. We we will Marsha and I will um, look at the three pillars, three or four pillars that we talked about in terms of areas of focus, and work with uh, Nayla and uh, Chairman uh, Taylor to um, figure out who it is that we want to begin this process with. That's of course we might very well discover that there are others that we want to bring back for additional similar types of conversations, but we should at least get started and uh, see what we learn. And that might point the way to um, other discussions that we want to have. So we won't take the time uh, from this committee today, but we, uh, when we send out the invitations, maybe uh, Marsha and I will have that uh, outline for everyone so that you can decide if you want to be a part of those interviews. Good. Randy, do you, or, or uh, Eddie, would you like me to try to set up something with uh, Randy and Marsha and yourself and I maybe later this week to have those discussions? Would that be helpful? Yeah, but the important two or the important three are you, Marsha, and Randy, but the answer is yes. Okay. I, I'll send you guys an email if that's okay and just try to get an available hour or so and I can be helpful um, if you need me in terms of helping to identify the folks once you tell me the areas, okay? Okay. So, so I think, I think Nyla, this is a good trajectory. Uh, I hope you and the county executive agree, right? So we, we do want testimony. We will at some point have outside testimony, whether it's Will Tarter, Phyllis Benjamin, Peggy Zone, and others who have comments, but turning inward to start uh, to try to create some efficiency is a good idea. And that then informs the work that Peter will do. So I want you, I want everyone to feel okay if possible and appropriate with this direction? Are, are we satisfied that these represent steps made uh, towards um, the outcome we all, you know, I don't know if we, we have the outcome predetermined, but certainly an outcome we seek, and that is to have a, a set of findings that, that go to what's important for this county, for this community. Are you guys comfortable with this direction as first set of steps? Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, Mr. Chairman, I just also was wondering, uh, while we have our county executive, if if he or others thought that his perspective might also be a really useful early key informant interview. I mean, going back to Marsha's point earlier, obviously we don't want to continue to perpetuate the challenges we have, but understanding that that global perspective I thought might be valuable. So I just hadn't heard that brought up. So I wanted to make sure I brought that up before we move on. Armin, are you still on the call? Yeah, uh, Heidi, uh froze about halfway through her comments. So I didn't hear all that she said. Sorry, can you hear me better now? Now I can hear you. Okay. I uh, just felt like you would be an important early, um, early key informant interview for a global perspective as we embark on this process. And I hadn't heard that brought up. Um, I know Phyllis mentioned an org chart and specific focus areas, but I thought your perspective and your position would be very valuable um, getting at some of Marsha's earlier points about wanting to move the needle where, about where we want to go, not, not where we're at. Sure. I'm happy to contribute any way I can. Great. Thank you. So, Naila, the only other thing I'd add here is that when it comes to the county policies, I'd like a, a, a role uh, in that conversation as it is overarching. I'm going to ask others uh, separately to join me in sort of reviewing policies and and creating the same uh, beginning point, if you will. Uh, so that'll require reading and some summary work. Uh, but I hope there are those who will be interested in that effort as well as we just look at overall policies. I don't know how many volumes <laughs> of work that incorporates, uh, but I do know that it's a it's a starting point, and hopefully we get some assistance from council because uh, we were reminded. Uh, that that is uh, core to what the enabling legislation uh, instructs us to do. Eddie, you're fading out. We, I, I lost you when it said we were reminded. I don't know if others did. Oh, I'm sorry. I was simply saying we were reminded of the enabling legislation by council. So we have to make that a core uh, element of the beginning work as well. And I'm hoping others will, will mm -hmm. on this committee join us for that. Okay, so I, I can have a conversation with you on, offline and maybe you and I can identify some of the policies and I can um, secure those for you and others on the group who, okay. okay. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I 
just ask one question. I don't know that we're ready for this question yet or that we're sure, but given that we're starting to embark on some steps, um, are we thinking that our work is going to be primarily internally focused on, on the infrastructure of the county, A, or B, focused on the infrastructure of the county and then moving out to community systems, or just using the model of what's happening at the county to look at what we do with community systems. Do we have any sense of what the priority of our work is gonna be yet? Well, I think it's driven in part by the legislation the resolution. So I, I would invite Ayla and others with the county to help us with that answer. So I, I can speak up a little bit and then I'll defer to Armin. Um, as I think Armin talked about during his August meeting, there is an, an internal county um, group set up to sort of look inward. And I think it was Armin's vision and the vision of the legislation that this council would look more outward. Um, I understand what you're saying though about starting inward to help guide your outward look. But um, as we look to the legislation and I'm looking at it now, um, it does, one of the duties that's listed is engaging, encouraging community outreach and public participation in the development of the equity strategies and programs. Um, so it is a sort of an outward look, uh, Marsha, as well. Armin, what would you like to add to that? I think you covered it well. We have um, council established two equity groups, this equity advisory commission council and an equity committee equity committee is made up of, uh, I don't know, five directors, uh, county directors with the charge of looking at the, uh, at the county policies and procedures and how we can be more, uh, more equitable as a county. So um, certainly there's no limits on what you all wanna do, uh, but um, there is another group looking inward. Marcia, does that answer your question or provide a little more clarity? No? It does, yeah. because what it, it makes me think about, yeah, because what it does is it helps also to understand those focused conversations that we want to have. Again, when we talk about who we want to talk to, that's certainly a group that's already been identified as working on, uh, that we probably want to make sure we don't bypass. And also the um, legislation, I apologize, Eddie, go ahead. No, 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 please. Uh, the legislation also speaks to that your group or the this council is supposed to coordinate and support the efforts of the internal commission. So I'm just gonna pause here. And for those who haven't had a chance, uh, if you feel a desire to offer anything at this point, certainly do so. Okay. I know. Uh, Josh and others have, have listened intently. And, there, and again, if there's nothing you want to add, we understand it's not about your engagement. It's just you're waiting <laughs> for things that uh, make sense to you. But are there any comments from others? Hi, this is Danielle. I know I apologize that I had another meeting that um, ran into the start of this. Just in hearing the, the conversation that's happening now, just curious if there's been any discussion about how this body will work with any other bodies that are also attacking racism as a public health crisis, uh, be it the city of Cleveland, some of the neighboring counties, uh, the conversations that are happening at the state level. Is that something that we've discussed as consideration and how our work may intersect and in some spaces overlap with other um, bodies that are similarly situated working on this topic? Well, I'll answer from my perspective. It's a, again, a great question. Uh, we saw that the that, uh, Summit County, maybe even the city of Akron, announced an effort uh, shortly after, maybe you know, weeks after our, our effort, and this committee was announced. Uh, I haven't mis mentioned this to the county executive, but sir, I heard from uh, Senator Brown, who called on this subject. We're going to have a 
conversation because he wants to ask how he might help. Um, and there are other similar discussions. So the answer is it probably Danielle should have a bit of a, a outreach or connection. I'm not sure how far we can go with time and energy. And, I think and, we, I thought we raised the question because Cleveland also declared racism as a public health crisis, but I don't think we did the action step. And I think we had a conversation about taking a look at what they were doing. Um, and, but I don't think we didn't then said, let's, let's connect with somebody to, to do it. Um, so that would be an action that we would need to take before our next meeting. And um, I didn't realize, you know, um, it makes sense that other um, cities are doing this work too, but let's find out, you know, maybe we can find out and um, they, I don't know, there's two things like getting connected and seeing what's happening so that there is some synergy around it. Um, and then also um, when we talked about the internal work happening, that committee, there's, I think there's gonna have to be something intentional around our sharing information. And so I know we're gonna get some uh, sort of like a, a, a view from them about you know what's working, what's not working, what they're doing. How do we make sure that we continue to have a like a smooth communication so like it doesn't it's a lot of work and a lot of folks are you know going at it and then we're learning that we're, we, we're going to have this hopefully systems thinking approach to it um, but how do we just lift up each other's work as we're doing it and learn from each other and if people are making mistakes I want to know that and not do that and so if I have information ahead of time we if we do that would be helpful is there how do we play together around information? Do we? Can we be a bridge? For yeah, and one of the reasons I guess I share that I specifically asked that is because I am on the committee for racism as, racism as a public health crisis for the city, and I am on this committee, so I end up, um, you know, being in in both conversations, and I've and I've raised the same thing there that while there are certain things as we look at the internal efforts that will happen in all these conversations. There are some very specific things that will happen inside of the city that are very different, or maybe the same, but there's different ownership of those outcomes because of the city county structure. But then as we think about the community's perspective is that a lot of this work also has community benefit and it has outreach to the business community and others who are doing the work. Oftentimes there is an overlap between who the community is when you talk, start to talk about city county structure, because if I'm a business that's located in the city of Cleveland, I'm also inside of Cuyahoga County. And so if we're putting out recommendations for businesses to think about ways that they may impact um, racism and the public health crisis in their organization, there's gonna be some overlap there. So I, I would just encourage us to think about pushing internally to think about how we create some structure sooner rather than later that look at the places where we're likely to have over I'm sorry, excuse me, Danielle. I'm Can sorry. Can we all remember to mute our, our, let's mute if we're not talking, there's some background noise. That's Sheila, 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 that's you. Sheila, can you mute for us? Sheila? The host able to mute. All right, sorry, Danielle. I'm sorry. Not a problem. I just wanted to add. I just want to add to the females from County Council staff. Um, have we looked at also, and this might add to what you were just saying, Danielle, have we looked at also looking at some of our external clients and finding out where we are doing a good job at providing services and where we're not and how that affects structural racism as well. So I'm just wondering, I know we've talked about um, talking to individual directors and departments, but also do we get that voice from individuals who are receiving those benefits from the county and how does that improve their overall well-being? So maybe we need and, and maybe we need to hear that voice along with some of our business um, uh, um, individuals who are business owners as well, but we also need to hear some of the consumer side as well, because that also kind of drives some of the issues that we have with um, structural racism as well. So I think that should be a consideration. Folks. 
Yeah, so I just want to, I think I what I understand is we probably don't want to do this in a silo. And so recognizing that there's these efforts going on around us. And I'm wondering if, you know, once we start to develop a cadence for this work, uh, you know, is it worth, you know, blocking out like 10 to 15 minutes of sort of open discussion on what we're seeing? I don't know if it, you would consider it best practice, but what we're seeing around us and not, not even just in the region or Ohio, but around, across the country. Um, and of course, we have the email chain. And so if there's articles that folks want to share, you know, I'm certainly you know willing to you know, view those as well. But just throwing that out there. All right, I think I think we're good uh, here. So to Danielle's point around partners, and thank you for reminding us that you were on this work with the city. The point of getting the input from outsiders a good one, and then uh, this notion of a cadence um, uh, for this work, all important. I just want to remind us we can't be in the sort of the ocean boiling business, right? We we have to this thing can get unwieldy if we allow it to, uh, uh, especially with timelines associated with it. So we will remind ourselves of that uh, at steps along the way, but all the right inputs. And yes, we should have these other connections, both with folks doing this work, those we are serving right in the community uh, to the point made by this Ross. So yes, we will do all of those things, um, uh, but let's now, if we can sort of deal with first things first. And as an aside, I will, after working with Naila, get back to all of you, perhaps individually or small group email messages with some requests. They don't, they don't, I don't want you to interpret them as assignments. <laughs> I want you to interpret them as requests <laughs> so that we can begin to better guide some of this work because it won't happen in these two hour Zoom calls. We get it. We're not going to come to terms on a lot of things, um, but we do want to begin to focus and that focus can, can, be offline a little bit. We do have some work right now, though. We're going to do the internal discussions led by uh, Randy and, and Marcia. We're going to continue to work on the the the, uh, the external things because we ultimately have to make a report to the community. Uh, I'm going to get a small group. We're going to work through some of the policy discussions or review, and then uh, between Peter and, and Heidi and others, we're going to start this mapping that is really important. I'd like to hear from the communications. Uh, committee, subcommittee, uh, you folks talked the other day. Any any thoughts from anyone who was a part of that conversation? Well, I can I can start. We did have the meeting. Um, it was with Phyllis, Levine, Habiba, and Victor, mm -hmm. and um, Phyllis graciously agreed. <coughs> Excuse me graciously agreed to uh, co-chair that. Um, we did, it actually folds nicely into this. There was a high level discussion on what other cities, communities, and municipalities were talking about in this space and what their sort of communication plan was. Mm -hmm. um, but do one of the members that I suggested, maybe they can give a more detailed summary of that meeting with Eliza Wing from the county. I was scrambling to look at my notes really quickly and <laughs> Um, um, but the, the meeting really just sort of like set the framework for how um, we wanted to be able to get information out. Um, so we talked about um, um, support from the county around um, uh, communications with um, the use of blogs, um, communications with the use of um, through social media and how that could be possible. Um, Victor um, had some input around using um, radio, public radio, if I remember correctly. So really just figuring out how to, um, what is, what is how, that it's gonna be important um, to be transparent about, you know, what's happening, um, starting to, um, you know, think about how to do that in a way that we are, like I said, um, I brought it up. So I'm already, I already have the hat on and um, how do we talk uh, among each other uh, and communicate what's happening internally and externally? So what do we want to each other to know? What do we want the community to, to know? And what is reasonable around transparency so that we are, you know, we're, people are, so that we are building trust while we're doing the work. So there was a little, mostly conversation about that. Is there anything else that we could share that might be helpful for the broader commu committee? And you'll get notes soon. 
I believe. Um, we're working on a format um, about how to disseminate information from the communication subcommittee to the broader committee too. Um, you know, um, you're going to be telling us what is important to to know or understand. We're going to be asking you for information um, and going for there. So like high level, but you know, here are the things and then here's the action that's going to happen so that you know and can see our work as well. Anything else? Any questions? Any requests? So you you guys were, uh, other than working with Naila, you were the first group to work with another resource within the county. I'm not asking you to judge that, <laughs> you know, because I, I think the world of Eliza. I'm just curious, do you feel like you're going to get the the um, support, the the input, the responses that you are that you're after to inform the work? Well, so far, I'll go ahead. Uh, you know, that's a that's a great question, Eddie. I think there was, I think there was some, and I'll speak for myself. There were some expectations of of myself as a member of this committee that I actually kind of pushed back and said I actually think that's staff. Um, so that was a good conversation about you know what is it that it's our our role and our responsibility and where we need support. So we, we and someone, and I remember who said, you know, for the communications, it ideal is to get some, a, a person um, assigned to this committee that could really be, you know, do all of our work from social media to ensuring that we're, um, you know, all of our materials are put on the website. Website came up as well is because we part of, Part of transparency is how easily accessible is it to the general public. Um, so one of our requests, Eddie, was was to have someone who was who had um, sufficient enough time dedicated to this committee to uh, help us with a comprehensive communication strategy. Yeah, we asked for a template um, if there was one that existed, um, and really, I think it's just figuring out what the roles are going to be and how to get communicate. So we're in that it was first meeting, getting structured around how we do the work, how we have the most impact, who's on what base and, and things like that. See, I did a sport analogy. I hope it didn't work with, but anyway, I'm trying here. Um, so, so yeah, so I think we have a, a, a first framework. We'll have some notes and we'll follow up. Um, we're requesting some support. We know that we are all very busy and we want the, you know, the, the, the communication, the social media platforms, um, a place where community can go. If that doesn't work, if they don't have access, we have the, we have the, you know, the um, divide around who has access to internet and things like that, digital divide. So are there other ways that we can get communication out? So it was a lot. We didn't get to a whole bunch of answers, but we are in the forming stage. Great. So you guys will understand about my style. I, I, I do ask thoughts of folks who are <laughs> around the line. So I'm just going to ask uh, between Reverend Chalker, uh, Habiba, uh, Rabbi Caruso, anyone have any thoughts, um, what they've heard and what they've heard to this point? I just want to make sure that not only are you keeping me on task and on track, but that we're getting your input in these discussions because it matters. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for the direction in which we're going. I think it's right on and I, uh, so I'm supportive. Okay. I agree and I, I say, you know, to the point of the communications committee and what Phyllis and, and Victor said and the synergy with what we've talked about on the call today, just kind of setting the boundaries around the work, um, establishing the parameters that'll keep it just manageable. Um, feels like we're on track to me. Okay. Eddie, don't forget about Yanella. Oh, did I, did I, uh, because of Yanella, please. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. <laughs> And she appreciates you calling her out like that. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm, I'm listening along, and I have been putting my comments in the, um, in the chat box. But yeah, I think we're on a good roll. And as I stated earlier, um, you had made the comment about 
like things could potentially get out of hand and then we'll again, you know, I commented that I agree. We want to make sure that um, we do all of like the prerequisite work, but then that we actually start getting the job done. So, uh, yep, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, and I'll, thank you, Randy. <laughs> um, Sheila, we, we have you on mute now. Um, <laughs> any, any thoughts? From you? No, I, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting ready to board a flight, so I apologize. Okay, for that's all right. Um, but no, I, you know, I like the direction it's going. I think I don't want to belabor points that have already been made. Um, I think most of the time, I just can speak for myself when I get involved with a project, usually the infrastructure and the direction or the mission is already clear. So this is a, a different, um, you know, just a different step to getting there but I believe we will get there. And thank you for being um, the kind of thoughtful leader that you are um, to include everyone and just make sure all points are heard. So looking forward to the work. All right, well, thank you all very much. Naila, let's sort of uh, get through to, do you have anything on the balance of your agenda? Uh, the only thing I do have, Eddie, and I don't know if you want to defer the conversation since you've talked about it a little bit, is just to circle back to the actual writing of the report and what's due. Um, we do have that due date of December 31st where their recommendations need to be put forth to reduce the disparity between black and white residents in the categories that you all come up with and that we've discussed that the, that the legislation outlines, and also that there's the semi-annual reporting um, requirement for policies and programs that's due and whether or not you wanted to or and you and the group want to make the first semi-annual report the same report or a different report or how you want to do that as the December 31st report and then also lastly just revisiting the conversation about the regular updates to council where on the last meeting we discussed those being quarterly updates and when did you want that first one so those were sort of the last three pieces all bunched together to discuss. Thank you. Uh, yeah, always great to have you <laughs> in our corner on this because you, you're going to keep us on track. So let's unpack the first one. Um, that is, we have these semi-annual reports that are due, the, the written version of, of the work. I believe what um, Naila is saying is that we can make this first one due, that, that is due December 31st, a semi-annual. Uh, is that accurate that, that was an accurate um suggestion discussion something that you may want to consider yes because because it, it if it's semi-annual what does that accomplish rather than being the the sort of december the 1231 annual report is there a benefit is it shorter in length does it not does it not have to have all of the the details sorted out is there some advantage to doing it that way so let me, why don't I try to do this? I will share my screen, although it's on the slides I've outlined. Let me figure out how to do that. Okay, so let me share the screen. And while she's doing that, uh, I, I'm okay uh, being the first one to speak to County Council on the work we're doing. I think it just, it makes sense, right? Given what we've decided as an organization, I will enlist one other person to join me. We will talk about the timing of when the next discussion before County takes place so we can give them an update. It is a routine part of the work here, um, but I've mentioned it before and thank you, Sheila, for bringing it up again. Everyone gets a turn. <laughs> it's just the way, it's the way this is, it should work. You know, I hope we don't run out of time so that everyone is in a position to speak both passionately, fervently, and thoughtfully around the work that's being done. So not both, all three of those things. <laughs> so uh, that note you should know is coming, all right? Um, so with respect to council, I want us all involved at some point along the way. So Eddie, Eddie what I've done is, as you can see on the screen, again, it just says in the legislation that there has to be a status report due and that's yearly. And again, it's the recommendations to reduce the disparity between black and white residents. And then it delineates the topics that we've gone over earlier. And then if we look to the next slide, 
has the semi-annual reporting requirement, and that's sort of recommendations for policies and programs based on what's collected from the public, again, going back to Marsh's point and outward facing regarding equity. So I don't know if you wanna combine those two or do you wanna do them in separate documents or how the council best wants to produce that written work? Well, to this point, since we have not produced any work in 2020, the 1231 of 2020 counts for the annual report, right? We haven't produced a semi-annual, so we haven't done anything. So what's due next is this annual report, I imagine, right? Um, I would agree, yes. Okay, so we have to we have to get there. The policies and such, uh, yeah, I wish, I wish we could flip it quite honestly, but I don't know that we can given that we have this 1231-2020 deadline for a very clear purpose. And that is to uh, comment on the, the components of the legislation. I'm sorry, I'll leave it there for a second. Anyone read this differently? Chairman, I'm reading this as, as um, a, a status report. And I'm curious if that is in reference to our work, our the, advi the advisory council's status and the semi-annual report is a bit different. So Naila, I, I thank you, Habiba. That's, a, that's, I think, an appropriate reading, right? Where we are, what we've done with respect to uh, recommendations to reducing these things. But the language is consistent in the second part as well with respect to recommendations. Uh, but these sound like actual policies, right, and programs. and and the outcomes of that work of the status that we have to report. I, I think I agree. That's a fair read, um, Habiba and Eddie. Um, so again, this is the one from, and this is just pulled directly from the legislation as is this one. Chairman, I would, this is Daniel, I would agree as well. I, it looks like again, from a status update, I think to Habiba's point, all of the things that we're discussing now in terms of the things that we will do that ultimately inform how we arrive at making recommendations, the focuses, the priorities would be something that I would imagine by the end of December, we could be able to report out on. But in terms of maybe actual adoptable recommendations and policies, likely not until that um, next report. So, so I, would, I would ask that we frame our thinking uh, for the 1231 is a, a narrated chronicling of the work that we've done to this point, right? The, the work of the various subcommittees, the process, the structure, the conversations we've had, um, that for me represents the status. Uh, again, I would, I would ask for clear thinking out there if folks have other thoughts. just want to raise up Phyllis's comment from the um, chat, which I I appreciate, which is who can we ask for some clarity? I'm just thinking we're all smart people. So if it's not clear to us, something's wrong. <laughs> um, but may, but and I so I so don't understand the system very well and reading resolutions. Um, so I, I ask a lot, a lot of questions. So at this point, I can defer. I mean, I, I, I am a lawyer, as all of you know, but I'm going to defer to um, Awadif on this one and let her, since her role is um, as lawyer. Awadif, are you still on the call? And maybe you can provide some clarity for the council in terms of the two ordinances and how they can be read either together, separately, and what the requirements are. Yeah, this is a lot of facade. I um, let me look into it, and we'll have to get back to the group on that. I did look at uh, the enabling legislation and did incorporate some of the uh, language as um, the equ equities um, functions and um, duties. So I will uh, take a deeper dive, and we'll have to get back to you on this. 
Thank you, Awada. And to my phrase around a narrated chronicling of things, let me know if that is off base because that that makes this this date um, still formidable, but less uh, anxiety producing if that's what we're doing. So, um, so uh, please let us know. All right. Any other any other comments? Are folks okay with the? Testimony before council, county council, when the time comes and everyone playing a role. Everyone's good with that? Yes. Yes. All right, good. Please. Thank, well, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. All right. Uh, and what we'll do, Nyla, you and I should just look at the schedule, right? The council and then begin filling in the blanks uh, along the way. And that way you guys can tell us yay or nay. All right, anything else on the agenda for the good of the order, this group? You're on mute, Naila. See my mouth moving. A couple of quick uh, final items is just, I will be having someone in my staff send out another uh, doodle poll over the next few days to determine everyone's availability. We're probably gonna look around uh, Thursday, September 24th or Friday, September 25th for our next meeting. So you guys will see that coming soon. Also, um, the communication subcommittee, there's a doodle poll that already went out to schedule that next committee meeting. I think most of you have responded um, the week of the 7th, which is actually next week. Um, I will you know, follow up on the things that we've discussed. And then the last uh, thing that I wanted to share was just an opportunity that um, I believe the Director of Public Safety made me aware, Alex Pelham, who works for Armin, um, that the University of Akron Law School is offering a 12-week free course on racial equity. The course is gonna be virtual on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6.30, starting uh, this week, September 2nd, and it runs through November 18th. I have enrolled in the course as has another member of my staff and I will attempt to attend as many sessions as I can. And if the council finds it relevant or necessary, I am more than happy to provide any updates on relevant information that's discussed if that's something you all would be interested in, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Other than that, if well, there's I do, have, I do have a question uh, sure. for everyone and, and look, if this Sound feels like a setup. It's because it is right. So just know that going in. Uh, anyone on this group love to write, <laughs> have a passion for it. Think uh, whether or not you believe you're good at it. But anyone want to raise their hand to to help us with the the written portion of this? And I know Randy is talented at it, but others who um, wouldn't mind stepping into this space with respect to the the writing portion of it of what we are old ultimately, or what we have to, to uh, make available ultimately. This really is a setup, so I, I'd say yes to those who, <laughs> who think it, that's the case, yeah. I could I could certainly be involved in the process. Um, yeah, there you go. Eddie, I, I love to write, and I, it's something that I do a lot. Um, I just, I'm hesitant given my role in the COVID response and the um, impending circulation of influenza coming in the next few weeks. So I'm hesitant to be in a lead, but um, certainly happy to, to write and or edit or, you know, carry whatever I need to on the, on the writing part. So I think I'm hearing one and two possibles for those who play that particular game. Um, uh, I think that's a good start. Are there others? I'd be willing to be considered to be helpful too. Okay, great. That's a great start. What I can do is um, bring a resource alongside myself, okay, to, to help because capacity wise, I'm also just in full disclosure, I'm also co chairing on the city of Cleveland's um, racial disparity piece. So I want to be careful to be able to give um, equal commitment and energy to both. So I can certainly help and will, you know, find whatever resource I need to make sure I can deliver whatever you need from me. Great start. Thank you all. 
I didn't, Randy didn't, he never moved from mute, but I, <laughs> let's see, because I, I know it's time. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, great. All right, anything else um, folks believe we should discuss? I just wanted to say one thing, Eddie, um, that I would uh, encourage my dear colleagues on this um, committee to keep in mind that there are immeasurable um, systemic racism practices and procedures happening everywhere we turn, every organization, every institution, every aspect of our community. And uh, with that in mind, we, we really are charged with the, the real work of looking at Cuyahoga County government and uh, how that all plays out and needs to be corrected and addressed in that environment, which um, might be difficult at times because there's so much that we'll be seeing and reading and the reports that come out and other thought leaders that weigh in. Um, well, Sheila's back. <laughs> um, but uh, my, my only point was that um, I, I think a good example would be the work that Marsha and Danielle are doing with the city. There are things that the city of Cleveland could be doing in this space that differ from the county just because of their areas of responsibility. Oftentimes they can be complementary, but just the way that the governments are designed will, will limit you know, the extent to which each can, you know, delve into a certain area. So um, I think that that's just something that we should always be mindful of that we really have to address Cuyahoga County. And there's enough, more than enough work to be done within Cuyahoga County government in this space. And that we shouldn't um, try to get, you know, we should control ourselves and, and track our activities. And when we see that we're drifting a bit, pull ourselves back to that, you know, center. Uh, which is Calhoun County government. Thank you. Sure. I think that's a, that's a really good point. And um, I've just, as we've been going through this meeting, feeling like um, the work that Peter's gonna do for us is gonna show some really complex systems that extend far beyond county government. But I think that it will be very helpful to see how they fit together and where we actually can Im make impact in the short term and the longer term and how that fits in with the other context around us that we we maybe aren't charged with addressing um, but which which is related to our work so i'm really hopeful that we'll be able to continue it sounds like we're going to be really good at reminding ourselves what our charge is but also considering the larger context and, and i'm really encouraged by that thank you for bringing us back to that i add though um, you know it is in certain areas like economic development, for example, that Randy and uh, Eddie and, and many of you are familiar with, um, it, we're really going to make a difference. Um, hard to imagine uh, doing it uh, without the county, without parallel or cooperation or in conjunction with the city. Um, you know, there's almost no economic development in the city of Cleveland that goes on without the two of us working together. And if, if we're going to, you know, impact structural racism, uh, it's hard for one entity to do something that's going to really be impactful without the other. So um, I'm glad that there are members that are uh, on both committees or commissions, and I think that'll be very helpful to help us uh, synchronize or coordinate. Agreed. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive Bush. So Naila, we'll give you a final word before we depart. So my final word, which will always be my final word, is just another really thank you to all of you. Again, um, on behalf of Armin, on behalf of the county, on behalf of myself, thank you for your dedication and your commitment to this most important work. I am proud to report that I did not take the full two hours because it is 4.54 when we are adjourning this meeting. And if you recall, we started six minutes late. So we'll see if I can beat that record again. So again, thank you. And I will um, follow up with those of you that we discussed during this call to follow up with. So appreciate you all. Have a good day and stay safe. Thanks thank everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you everyone. Thank you.
Hey, Nayla. You're on mute. Are you going to stay on, Nayla, for as long as it takes? Armin, Ar Armin I'm calling you now, so let's hang up. Go.